Regardless, we are blessed by your presence, and we all know that all are welcome in this community of faith, in this community of faith that focuses on gratitude and love, inclusion and service. As we were in touch with some parishioners this week, we kept hearing that people are tired of being stuck at home and miss the connection and fellowship that church has to offer. Please know that we miss each one of you and that we are eagerly looking forward to the day when we can gather again. Until then, remember that this won't last forever and that God's love and our love is surrounding you. And now a word about today's service. We are blessed that it is being led by our passionate and capable youth mission trippers. As many of you know, we had to cancel our in-person mission trip to Miami, but many of our youth participated in a virtual mission trip created by Andrew Wicks and Amy Woodruff. This youth-led worship service captures the insights and reflections of our high schoolers after engaging in a week of virtual mission work focused on refugees, immigrants, and migrant workers. During the week, students delved deeply into the lived experiences of some of society's most overlooked people, as well as the individuals and organizations that provide aid when it's needed most. Building upon First Church's existing partnerships and new partnerships in Miami, students learned and served while considering God's ancient call to welcome the foreigner and the stranger. Honest and direct conversations with individuals who have lived through these challenges were a meaningful part of the program and put a human face to the reality of the situation. This worship service gives voice to the age-old faith question of who are my neighbors and how can I love them best? As a First Church community, we know the importance of making room for children and youth in our worship. They are genuine, insightful, and they are the future of this church. As we often say about a worship service led by our youth or by our children, it simply doesn't get any better than this. And finally, we can think of no better way to celebrate Mother's Day. For today, mothers who are immigrants, refugees, and strangers from foreign lands are often the most vulnerable people in our world. And then, of course, so are their children. Today, today, they are perhaps the mothers most in need of God's love and most in need of our love. God, 
Prepare our hearts to be focused on your word and your message. Keep present in our minds the members of your family who have traveled across borders to live safely in this country. Grow our compassion to reach out to our neighbors with love, regardless of where they are from. Remind us daily of your message to welcome the foreigner and love them as our own. Let us be a comfort to those who are weary from travel, hunger, violence, fear, and injustice. Let us share the burden as servants to our brothers and sisters. Now we join together with the words taught to us by Jesus Christ, praying. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, boys and girls, and everyone else, too. It's Miss Lauren, and today we have a special guest for our children's message, Nick Anderson. Hope you enjoy. Hi, everybody. So today I have a question for you all. Has anybody here ever felt left out or maybe seen somebody who was left out? And how does a person who's left out feel? They're probably pretty sad or angry. Or maybe they're disappointed. So what I want you all to do right now is close your eyes and imagine a world where everybody is allowed to be together and come together and talk and play. Let's close your eyes and imagine a world like that. Everybody seems pretty happy, right? And that's what Jesus wanted our world to be like. He wanted everybody, no matter where you came from or who you were, he just wanted everyone to come together and be happy. And in April, us teenagers went on a mission trip to see what our country does to make a world like that happen. And when you kids get older, you can go on a mission trip too. So on our mission trip, we learned about immigrants. Does anyone know what an immigrant is? Well, it's somebody who comes from anywhere in the world to our country, and we invite them in. And that's what Jesus did. He invited all sorts of different people to be with him, and he loved all of them the same. And as followers of Jesus, we should do our best to do the same thing, and know that God loves every single person on our planet equally. So, we should treat anyone we know like they're our family. 
And if we can do that, then our world will be a much happier place and nobody will be left out. So can you all stand up and let's say, may the good news of God's love be with you. Let us pass the peace. Gracious God, we come to worship to be reminded that all of life is a gift from you. We offer prayers of gratitude for spring days and blooming flowers, for houses to live in and food to eat. We also lift up the sadness in our lives, missed proms and graduation, sickness and isolation, exhaustion and sadness. We know you are a God who rejoices with us and also cries with us. On this day of celebrating your love, God, we remember those mothers who have joined you in heaven and whom we miss dearly this day. For mothers who work day and night to raise their children, we are grateful. We also remember those mothers who labor at this task alone. For women who are new mothers and women who are expecting children, we praise you, O oh God. We give thanks to those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms. We stand in solidarity this day, Holy One, with all of the mothers around the world who have watched their children die of hunger. Every mother who has been a victim of abuse, every woman who stands against a world that massacres their children in the name of war. We remember this day the children affected by hunger, homelessness, and violence. Our hearts are heavy for all those who grieve this day, and we remember our call to spread hope, peace, and love to every corner of the world. We know, Holy One, that the risen Christ stretches us to give beyond what is comfortable, to listen to those whose voices are often ignored, to care for our earth, to play joyfully, to be compassionate and faithful disciples, and to sing even when we feel hopeless. Even during these difficult times, may we find time to honor and thank all of the mothers in our lives for their sacrifices, their kindness, and their endless love. Inspire us, Holy One, to serve you in all that we do this day and all of our days. In your name, we humbly offer this prayer. Amen. From the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 33 to 34. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Hi, Amy. It is exciting to be here with you and to have a little conversation about the experience of being an immigrant since we come with our own life experiences from a couple different perspectives on that. And so let's just have a little chat here. Absolutely. Um, Andrew, how will you love your neighbor today, tomorrow and in the future? I am trying to remember now that our neighbors are in need, that needs are new and evolving during coronavirus, and that being a good neighbor and a good Christian means to be aware of the experience your neighbors are having um, and to keep in mind their needs as you go about your day to day. And I'm also trying really hard to remember that all of the issues that are coming up with coronavirus are just an extra layer on top of poverty and hunger and lack of affordable health care and education challenges that already exist for so many of my neighbors. And so trying to remember that the same issues that existed yesterday continue to be present in our communities today and in the future and to stay committed to being aware of what those issues are and being engaged in my community and addressing them. Amy, how will you love your neighbor today, tomorrow, and in the future? I think similar to you, Andrew, being aware of um, what love is needed and what support is needed today and tomorrow and in the future and how that changes. But the major thing that, or not but, but and the major thing that sticks with me is to love and treat my neighbor how they want to be loved and treated. Um, not necessarily supposing for them but focusing on the love that they need, not necessarily what I think they need. Um, and I think that's something really important that I try to remind myself today, but also for the future as changes, as needs change throughout. Um, I also think for the future, something that I 
will focus on and need to focus on is being patient um, with my love for the for my neighbor um, this particularly reminds me of scripture in from the corinthians talking about love is patient love being kind not envying not boasting and not being proud um, it's mm. also not rude or self-seeking um, and keeps no record of wrongs and always looking to protect trust hope and persevere and i think there's so many things in that that um, in Corinthians, talking about love, there's so many messages about love for the future. And the one that really sticks with me is that it perseveres and to put patience with that, especially as we are experiencing such trepid times and challenging times and times of great change. And change needs to be accompanied with patience um, as we navigate through these unprecedented times. Andrew, what does it mean to you to be welcomed by the stranger? I have been privileged throughout my time living abroad to have people that I barely know uh, make the effort to take care of me in ways that I haven't always even known that I needed or were going to be helpful to me. And so to me, the answer to that question is um, when people are aware of my needs, when people are cognizant of the way that I'm feeling, uh, that's what makes me feel welcomed. And I think that when we switch that perspective and we ask uh, young people in our congregation to be welcoming, uh, it's helpful to have that perspective, um, to know just what it feels like to have someone um, understand and appreciate the experience that you're going through and to be there to be a support, whether that's with tangible needs, uh, tangible means, or just with some love and care in moments when you need it. Amy, same question to you. What uh, does it mean to be welcomed by the stranger? Um, similarly, I've been welcomed by so many people. Um, I've also been so fortunate of um, having the experience of open arms by people worldwide, not just in one country, not just where I'm from or in this country. Um, and it's a very humbling experience to be welcomed by a stranger. I've been welcomed by people who have very little resources, um, who put most of their weekly earnings or money for food for the week into one meal with me and their family. And again, such an incredible humbling experience and the thing that pours out from that is uh, the, their huge resource and everyone's huge resource that they have to love so they may not have the economic means um, to welcome someone open doors as much as you may be used to but love there's always an abundance of love and I think that's a really important message to take through life um, for our youth, for anyone in our church community, is that we always have love to give to the stranger and to receive that is an incredible experience. And I think during our um, virtual mission trip, uh, Chris George from Iris spoke of people that they work with within Iris, refugees, migrants, um, asylum seekers, uh, when he was asked, what, what do you need? Aside from the monetary things, it was a friend. The, the people who are coming into this country want a friend. And First Church is an incredible place for that. It was definitely one of the first places that I was welcomed as a stranger into a community, um, especially in a place of faith. I've never, I never had such an overwhelming welcome of welcoming who I am, um, and no one else but me, um, I was welcomed and it was an incredible experience and one that I hope grows throughout our church community and in life. That's really great to hear. Yeah, it's a pretty wonderful place, First Church, <laughs> I'd have to say. <laughs> um, Andrew, what do you hear God saying to you now about hope, 
fear and life after the coronavirus? Well, my thoughts go to scripture on that one. Um, when we're told that, um, you know, God has a plan for us, plans for a future and for us to prosper. And so I think it's easy to fall into um, fear or insecurity when it's difficult to know what's coming down the road or what might be next, or if you'll be able to go to school in the fall or um, all kinds of things that, that just make life uncertain right now. And I have to temper that with God's certainty and surety and presence uh, for millennia and the messages that he's given to us uh, that are always true. The, the things that will preserve us and sustain us today are to care for our neighbor, to take care of our community, to be present with each other. And that is what I hear God saying again and again and again. It's actually not a new message. It's the same message that the people of God have received for generations and generations. Amy, what is God saying to you right now about hope, fear, and life after coronavirus? This is a big question. I know I just asked you <laughs> the same question. Um, I think the, that I'm hearing things on both a personal level and also as someone in society um, and within community. First, I'm hearing that it's okay to feel fear um, and to try not to be afraid to explore it, talk about it. You know, for people who don't know what the fall is going to look like going back to school, no matter how small or big um, your fears are, fears of health um, for yourself or loved ones, I think talking about it and having space to talk is really, really important. And that as we come together to talk about it, love perseveres to help work through that fear. Um, and being a community of love um, is, is really hopeful. And so also on what I'm hearing about hope, and this was definitely evident through our virtual mission trip as we explored the virtual means of mission work, was that we are the agents of change for hope, um, both for ourselves, but also for others, um, especially those who are facing discrimination and un unprecedented challenges during these times um, and challenges that I can't fathom. Um, I think that we are agents for change to support those individuals and to work with them. And then life after the virus, I, um, there's lots of, you know, what is life going to look like? Um, and what am I hearing about it? And being Mother's Day today, I wanted to borrow a powerful quote from a friend's mother about hope and thinking about it in the light of life after the virus. And although it's not technically God's work, it is a strong message um, for this life after it, for life after this pandemic. Um, and so I just love to share it with you. So this woman is Irene Fernandez. Um, she is a, she was a fierce and incredible human rights defender from Malaysia. And she once said, we belong to one race, the human race and we have only one earth. This solidarity of people must ensure that we put people and the planet before profits. The earth we are given is not just for us, but also for those who come after us. They need a tomorrow and that rests on us today. That's really beautiful. And I think that there are times when we should recognize that just a simple conversation can be a prayer and so Amen. Amen. Now I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah. 
2020 has been a year that I can surely say we will never forget. Although I was disappointed that I could not go on my final mission trip to Miami, I'm glad that we were still able to come together and learn about our community online. Mission trips are amazing, but it is really the people who make them what they are. In Biloxi and in Memphis, I was so fortunate to be surrounded with people who have helped me grow in my faith and as a person. I have learned not to take things for granted, especially the community of Senior High Fellowship. Through this virtual mission trip, I have learned that the world is in desperate need of our help. This week, I have learned to look at people in a new light because you never know what someone or their family is going through or has gone through to get where they are. God wanted us to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. And through this mission trip, I learned that we must take action and stand for those who are made voiceless because in another life, that could have been us. Hi, I'm Daniel Chance, one of the youth that went on the mission trip this year. And uh, being a freshman, this was my first mission trip to go on. And so I wasn't really sure what to expect, but of course I was super excited about what I was gonna go through and learn about a new population that I had only heard about on the news, immigrants. And along this journey, uh, me and all of my, uh, all of the other youth learned about what it means to be an immigrant. And just to put it simply, it's a person that's moving their permanent place of living location. And with that being said, there are three types of immigrants, refugees, illegal and non-illegal immigrants. Uh, and what we tried to do throughout this entire week, throughout our entire week of learning, was put ourselves in the shoes of people that we are helping, whether it be like do uh, 
uh, talk to them straight straightforward or do like exercises and put ourselves where in their situation. And this way of learning actually helped me a lot and with hearing from so many amazing people with amazing stories, uh, it really helped me open my eyes. And it was amazing to see the fact that our church was able to put something together that was so impactful for me and uh, that we were able to have Andrew who lives all the way in Paraguay right now and build this interactive and enriching experience for all of us by getting people across the east coast of the United States is nothing short of spectacular. And during this entire experience, we learned that our church is giving donations to these organizations that we're learning so much about and how they're super vulnerable right now, how they're helping the most vulnerable. And as Chris George, the president of IRIS said, the best way to help during these tough times is by giving donations in any way possible, such as money, food, or clothing. And I think it's amazing that our church was a prime example of this, which he speaks so highly of. Being a senior at my last mission trip was something myself and many other youth look forward to during our time at Senior High Fellowship. When I heard our mission trip to Miami was canceled, I was pretty disappointed. Not long after this cancellation, I became very excited to find out that our program was being put together to still give us a mission trip experience. Throughout, this, throughout the week, all of us had tasks to complete that taught us about immigration. We also got to speak on panels with organizations and some amazing people that shared their personal stories. I would have never had the chance to talk to these people if it weren't for this virtual mission trip. This experience has strengthened my relationship with God and has reminded me the messages we learned as children to always treat each other the way we want to be treated. Although this virtual mission trip was not labor intensive, it was very educational and opened my eyes to different ways that I can help people. I want to thank everyone that made this possible and hope everyone is staying safe. God, we give thanks in which all the ways you bless us. Even in quarantine, even in illness, even when we struggle, we know you are beside us. We are assured daily of your unfailing love and your bountiful compassion. We are eternally grateful for your gift of Jesus. We ask you to strengthen us to be the people of praise and of action, who bring your love to our neighbors each day as you command. All these things we pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. into the world in peace, to be of good courage, to hold fast to that which is good, to render to no one evil for evil, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, to help the afflicted, to rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to be faithful servants, advocates, and messengers. Remember the words and teachings at the heart of our ancient law, to welcome the foreigner, hold in your eternal truth, that God's love encompasses all people. May your mind and spirit be open to demonstrating that amazing love with each encounter. Amen.